Na na Okay, can I just say first off, before we get into it, I have hated on X Men so fucking not X Men, sorry. I've hated on Disney Marvel so fucking much uh in the last couple of years. Not since the start of this podcast. You go back to the beginning of the podcast when shit was still pooping out gold and, and we're all fine and dandy, right? Way back when content was good, Major was happy, right? But Major's been pretty upset these last couple of years with this terrible, terrible bullshit that's been, that we've just, I've, I've had to watch it. That's why it makes me, I've, I've had to watch it for the podcast. <laughs> I've had to watch it so you guys don't have to, right? So I came into this all sourpuss. I was not expecting X-Men to be good at all. I thought they were going to butcher it. Like, they butchered every comic book adaptation, almost every storyline since Endgame. But I did think, as I press play, and that theme song started up, I'm holding my baby. And I thought to myself, God dang, this is kind of fucking cool. Right? Like, I grew up sitting down on a couch with my dad watching this show. Uh, growing up and here I am as a father holding my daughter she, watching this TV show with her I mean she's not really watching it I'm, I don't I don't let her watch the screen or whatever but like I, I was telling her what was happening during the whole fight scenes and, and everything like that and like it was just a cool experience as a fan I really appreciate that so I want to say off the bat like yeah. I gave Marvel a big uh, boost on 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 the feels on the vibes for for X Men ninety seven coming into it. <laughs> so, Matt, you're a dad. Uh, what do you think? I, I will say the same thing. Uh, my son was sitting next to me for episode two and was really enthralled by it, and I could see him getting like sucked in. And so I was I was just like kind of vicariously reliving my childhood through him. That's so cool, um, right? Yeah, it, it was oh, great. Yeah. Which you know it's kind of frustrating because uh, I will say. A, we're talking about episodes one and two really quick. Episode one, I felt that they were kind of um, exploiting my nostalgia. Whereas episode two, I'm like, okay, I see where this is going now. So, um, the plot that we hope, picked hopefully, up a lot. Op- optimistic because the first episode, I was watching it uh, with my wife, and my wife's just staring at me like, "What are you watching? This is like <laughs> embarrassing." And I'm like, "Yeah, it almost is." Um, but then episode two pops out, and I'm like. Sitting with my son, I'm like, actually, this is kind of cool. Um, I thought it was like, I wasn't blown away by either episode. Um, I mean, you can definitely tell the voice actors have aged <laughs> since the mid 90s. <laughs> so, I mean, it's cool, it's cool that they're back, but um, yeah, that's how time works. I thought the dialogue wasn't that great. It's felt no, it's the 90s. It's the 90s. Dialogue. Do you know how hard it is? Better. Do you know how hard it is to write '90s dialogue? I thought they nailed it. Like that, it's hard to write that dialogue they, they that never bad. Said bogus or, they never said so. bogus or rad. You it's know. he said not uh we got the not uh cyclops did the not line oh no my eyes what can i do i can't no. see everything i'm done well, not a second there mister yeah remember borat came out like what oh six and he's saying like, no no, no the 90s no no the not. 90s did not no no see the thing with borat is he was so far behind but he's taking lessons from a comedian i don't know he, uh, major gets it but uh so uh <laughs> Where do I want to go with this? The issue I have is that at times it's super cheesy and there's this really interesting storyline lurking in the background because if you read the comics, you know all about Genosha. If you read the comics, you know all about Cable and where he comes from. TV timeout. And And if you've been alive for the last 15 years, you've suffered through two Dark Phoenix sagas. Go on. Right, well, right. They already, they already did the so, saga in the actual sh- in the actual cartoon tonight. Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. No, I'm just saying the so quality. I'm no, I'm saying the quality of X Men has right. been crap so, for a decade on the on your television, and now here so, comes ninety seven. One problem I do have with the show so far in the first two episodes is to catch up on all the exposition. There's a lot of info dumps that feel kind of like, you know, eh. You know, when Jean is standing there, she's like, the last time I wore this was when I was on the blue side of the moon and Cyclops was fighting beside uh, me. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of telling, oh. not showing. Wait, was so that, was that an 
expo dump or was that a nice Easter egg oh, so, for the fans? Yeah, but there's a lot of, I guess the issue I have is there's a lot so far of to ch- catch everybody up where they need to be. There's a lot of straight up telling, not showing. Right. And that's a huge problem. You know, they always say show, don't, show, tell. don't tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're telling a lot of the plot to catch people up, which I get you need to do, but I just feel, yeah, is... not to say I could come up with a better way, but I feel like there has to be a better so, way. Is this show taking like season six? In a way, it is definitely season uh, six. Yep. They, Which, so, just so you know, oh. first five seasons are on Disney. They are, uh, so, well, but you have to watch them in proper order because Disney does not list them in the proper order. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I go online, uh, and you have to uh, Why? Get, get, a, get a checklist. I think they so they do. When, uh, when, Fox, when Fox was carrying it, it, it's same thing with like Firefly. How they were really bad in the nineties about hey. Let's just show this episode, this episode, this episode. Let's wait eight weeks. Uh, let's just show this episode, this episode, this episode. So it's actually not in order according to like the way Fox aired it. Same thing with Firefly. And I think Disney has it listed in the Fox order and not the actual storyline order. Like when it came up on cable or something? Yeah. No, so like when Ooh, the... Nice, nice yeah. pun. The, ah. order was, <laughs> the order was supposed to be shown in. So, ha ha ha. Cable, I like, I love Cable and Bishop. Damn right. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, Bishop's in this, but he really doesn't do much. So now, more. Matt. So it's kind of like. He does seem a little too Bishop big. saves like, Cyclops and Storm in the first episode. When, I don't he gets that the at energy all. burst. Right. And let, me go back. Yeah. let me go back to Matt's first. Matt, Matt's little thing here. Because I don't know if you saw on the Disney Plus uh, March 20 through May 15 magazine cover. Uh, but they listed the first couple and last, uh, or they listed the X-Men episodes. And for instance, April 3rd, Life Death Part 1 comes out. And then on April 10th, Remember It comes out. And then on April 17th, Life Death Part 2 comes out. So prepare for the same annoyance because it seems like they're doing it on purpose. Well, they're definitely like adapting some stuff I don't think was in the original show, but still from the comics, like uh, Executioner, I think, is from the comics. He hadn't been adapted before. He's sort of like a Punisher, but he kills mutants or something like that. He executes um, mutants? He executes, yes. So yes. Um, it was cool they were like adapting stuff that hasn't been adapted before, like from 90s. Although, can are they allowed to adapt stuff that was published after the 90s, like Grant Morrison's run or... Yeah. Um, John, uh, what's his name? Ed Brubaker's stuff, but do, do it uh, all. Set us, do you think? All right, so do you think this is going to set us up for a live action X Men, or do you think live action X Men are going to be completely different from this? It's got to be different. Think, we can't I use the voice actors. Different. It's got to be. This, is like, this was done. This was done to, I guess, earn more goodwill for Marvel or Disney and, and make more money. The and Marvel, Disney, the Disney Marvel Plus. brand was sort of uh, tainted at this point but well, i mean that's pretty much like what they've been doing they've been nostalgia debating for the last like 10 years with uh star wars and um you know bringing back Han solo and luke skywalker and been killing them off so well, you, you, know, have, you have to recall disney, yeah. and, and don't, don't forget toy story they keep making new toy stories mm-hmm. so they're disney's really into the nostalgia baiting so i mean i'm sure we'll get a gargoyle season uh Four. and like I, said, I think they're also working on a spider-man 90s uh so, resurgence i thought about this and and so i, I opened th- this whole thing up with a little spiel about how special this moment was for me holding my daughter and then mm. i thought about it because uh well, you're just, like wait i'm being manipulated this no despite yeah despite what everyone fucking thinks i am an empathetic motherfucker and, and i thought what if this is how other people feel so i've got a new look on on reboots right and like Halo's wrapping up. We're about to talk about the Halo season two finale. Fucking Master Chief is on Halo and he kills the art. We'll get into it. But anyway, like <laughs> my my childhood. I'm reliving my childhood uh, as, uh, in my 30s. People are like, no, oh, you should be a grown ass man. Don't be a man child. Like, I'm sorry. It's just the shit on my TV is the same it was 20 years ago. Uh, my, my, my brain's my brain's so confused right now. Uh, but no, so like, um, I have a new. Not respect, not a newfound respect for reboots or whatever, but a new appreciation or a new empathetic, uh, m- merciful 
hold on, on my my opinion. I'm not so harsh on them anymore because you know what? Maybe Lion King was your favorite movie growing up, and maybe you just had a kid and you want to show them Lion the 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 new Lion King, and you want to go to theaters or whatever. And I don't know, so, but you're right. The uh, Toy uh, Story okay. Five, you, like with the the going, gay with, with the gay Buzz Lightyear or whatever, that was dumb. Thank you, Chris Pratt. Well, no, thank you. So my well, kind of issue Evans, though is 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 it exploiting us as a viewer because they're not giving us quality um, because they are using our nostalgia against us? Because, oh. like I said, especially in the first episode of X Men '97, I was really kind of bummed because I was like, I'm only watching it. I heard that credit come on. I was super pumped, and I'm excited, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, it was is similar this, is intro. This good? Or is, just this, like is, this, is this good? Is this well, good? Well, they seem to respect or, am I just more than Brian just, Singer did. Yeah, but do I just want it? Do I want it to be good? Because I remember growing up with this. Right. And so do studios exploit our nostalgia to come out with lower quality stuff they can just throw out there is kind of where I'm at right now, because... I feel like this could be better. I to keep on just doing it, yeah. yeah, it's nowhere stuff, near as good as stuff. 90 series, but as we all yeah. knew, and this, it, was, it was never going to be. So as, here's, as, but, I mean, it, I, it, it does seem to be going someplace. So I 100, I'll be, 100% agree with what you're saying for us. And Matt, you're spot on. But can I offer you uh, a different, uh, so there's your yin. Can I offer you a yin point of view, right? Just a counter example. What if, because I was thinking about this, and I'm just trying to be optimistic here. Uh, I also, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to be optimistic and positive, but I'm going to start with this negative gotta, comment here. Off, but... All right. Have a great night, man. I do have a theory oh, yeah. that just millennials, we we just kind of suck. We're, we weren't very well educated. We weren't well trained. We weren't well prepared for the real world. We're not very good at our jobs. Uh, so I wonder if... This is what you're saying. If it's nostalgia bait and, and they're just trying to pull on the heartstrings of 30 year olds or have the same people we grew up with, a.k.a. us, the fans, have we grown up and now we're uh, getting to the point in our careers where we are in charge of these products yep. and we're just incompetent. Right. Like I, I, I know this, so this I, person, I, I, this I, person I, has been working this, on. There's there's a showrunner on Halo I talked about last episode who has been working on a Halo series for 12 years. There's no way she doesn't love the series if she's working on it for 12 years, right? But this is still she's still pumping out, you know, relative garbage, right? I feel it, my heart needs to believe it's an incompetency issue because so, else what's what's I've, happening I've here? Yeah, this is this is the. Um... So I, I debate this with my wife all the time. It's the fact that people our age are now in middle management. Yeah. All right. We've been there long enough where we can make decisions, but mm-hmm. we're still overridden by Gen X and boomers. Uh, and scared so Gen Z fired it's, us. So to give you an idea, like uh, there was a BMW or Audi commercial a while back that played right here, right now by Fatboy Slim. Love that song. I love that mm-hmm. people are in the position to make the decision to play that song. But now that I hear that song 20, 30 times a day, I'm like, I fucking hate that song now. Um, who made this decision to put something from my childhood into a commercial that, you know, makes me want to buy a car I can't afford. Um, so I think part of the issue is that millennials right now are in middle management where they're able to make these decisions, but ultimately we're referring back to people above us who don't get it and don't mm-hmm. get why we're making these decisions. So I'm hoping in 10 years from now, um, we'll be the ones in charge and it'll be all the, uh, you know, Gen Zers and Gen A's that hate us for not getting them. <laughs> Eventually Man, it'll be our time. I'm, I'm a little worried. I want to, I want to like that. You know, one day it'll be our time, but I'm a little worried that like 10 years is a long time away. Do, I, if we keep up 10 years at this pace, you know how jaded we're going to be when it's, quote, unquote, our time? Like, you know how, like, America sw- is a pendulum. It just swings far left and far right. I'm not talking politically. I'm just talking, you know, in, in general, right? Uh, but uh, as a pendulum, I'm worried that if we do, you know, if we keep swinging, the, if the pendulum keeps swinging the way it's swinging for another eight, nine, ten years until it's, quote, unquote, our time, 
the pendulum is going to just, we're just going to cut the string. It's going to drop and it's not going to be fun. I hope if you guys are out there listening to us, I hope you fucking take 30 and 40 year olds more seriously because we do know what we're talking about. We don't know how to implement our dreams. We need the older people for that. Okay. Uh, And we need the younger people to, to shut the fuck up because look, actually we're millennials. We were all super young half a minute ago. We were all exactly in your footsteps. You're all just like screaming at Charlie Kirk or whatever. Yeah, dude, we were just there. All right, we get it. And now we're on the other side. Just be like, what is a woman? Like, could you just, no, I'm just kidding. But um, I did not love X-Men. This episode coming out the gate. You guys are absolutely right. Mm-hmm. I was very positive coming into this because I see this as a season six, really. And I hated season five. Dude, Professor X and his stupid ass girlfriend, that shitty animation when they fucking send it off like overseas, like or they, they change production studios halfway. I mean it's always been yeah. overseas, but they change production studios halfway through. And then did I mention Charlie or Charles's shitty girlfriend? I hated that so much. So I was walking into this new season ex- low expectations with just the gratitude in my heart that I was able to experience this with my daughter in my hands. But then the plane exploded. Do you guys even want to talk about what happens beforehand? Oh, it means this means that blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Uh, they, they're heading. The X-Men are heading to Genosha and then their plane explodes. Last critique before I just go full hard on fanboy. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about the scene when their plane explodes and they're they're flying to uh, Master Mo- Master Mold and in, in Genosha. Yeah. Uh, uh, they get attacked by a Sentinel uh, who's just floating in midair. He's got no booster pack. There's no jets. He's just he's just a half a Sentinel in midair and he attacks and blows up and, de- and decimates their plane. Go back and watch the scene. It's like what is that guy even doing there? Who knows. But, dude, this was the moment I rolled my eyes and I said, this is fucking stupid. I had so much hope for this TV show. And this is going to be so fucking dumb. And then the way they landed, by the time they landed, uh, Cyclops fucking does his percussion beam all the way down to to get there. Right? And then he says, to me, my X-Men. I got goosebumps all over my fucking body. And, dude, I'm telling you right now, I am not proud of that. I didn't want these goosebumps. I didn't ask for these goosebumps. I actively fought these goosebumps. But when he says, to me, my X-Men, dude, I chills all over all over my body. And then how good was the fight scene, right? Uh, see. Hmm. No? Yeah. I, I liked it. I liked it. It had moments, but at, at times. So when Gambit's like on Wolverine touching his claws. It's fucking. Through, yeah. No, like, I get. You get this. I get. I get the issue I have is uh, you get the this brief moment of like, oh, shit, they're screwed. And they're like, actually, no, we're not. And they're like, oh, yeah, actually, we are screwed. Oh, wait, no, we're not. And it was <laughs> it, that was kind of frustrating. But like the actual animation and like the fighting cell loved Loved, the, but loved. as a quick side note, if we can all go around and say who our most hated X Men was, because there is one certain X Men <laughs> I've always hated since I got into the series. Uh, Major, what is your Jubilee? I mean, it's, it's J- Jubilee so fucking Yo, much. Fuck you, Jubilee is the best. <laughs> no, <Anyways. laughs> Robbie. Rogue? Is it Rogue or, or Robbie? Um, who do you hate the most of the X Men? I honestly have didn't watch a whole lot of X Men growing up. <laughs> yeah, Rob hasn't seen ninety seven yet. Rob yeah, hasn't. So watched. reading reading the comics and watching the shows, I always fucking hated Cyclops. Yes. Okay. No. That that Boy him. Scott. That Boy Scout motherfucker. Yeah, Boy Scott. Boy Scout, that's yeah. yeah uh, Boy Scott. Because he's Scott. Whatever. Got Scott Grave. Scott. Whatever. Because I mean, you know, as a kid, you always no. He's the worst. Like Wolverine. Yeah. Wolverine, the anti-hero, and then Cyclops is always the one reining him in. He's such, so He's such a goody two-shoes. He's such a goody two-shoes. Oh, I hate him. So even now to Going day, through, like, top, uh, yeah. like, least popular X-Men characters right now. <laughs> to this day. To, to like, to uh, this day. Jubilee? 
Yeah, it's I my, love Jubilee. What? I've always loved oh, Jubilee. Rogue's I have her. Here. No. I love Rogue. Kid Omega. Cable. I love so. Cable. Oh wait, these Cable are. And Bishop. Yeah. Oh, these are a mix. These are a mix list. It's not all. Her. Yeah, I see. Rogue says beloved next to her. Okay. It, I thought it was a top like. Wait, hated. Rogue is yeah. beloved. I always, I always loved. I always loved Gambit and Rogue. Kid Omega Rogue hated. Yeah. Cable <gasps> you love Gambit and Rogue? Oh, I can't wait to talk about this little love yeah. triangle coming up in like episode more. two. And I don't like more, but I like more because of how he's triggering people on the right right now. No. Nope. Um, that's so, so weird. <laughs> That's not okay, Matt. I'll, take your hand out and <laughs> smack it with your other hand. Triggering the right is not a reason to like somebody. Okay. Yes, I, I've always. Wait, hated what him. happened? More. So, right, so in, Matt, in you want to? Yeah, explain. They describe they describe him as like pansexual or like asexual or something. I don't even know what they describe he's, him as. They call him transgender. But he's because he can change. I, he can. He's more. He can change in anything. Yeah, that is a good definition of it. Doing yeah, like the uh, the the character from Vought. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah. No. People on the right. But because they describe him in the bio as that, people on the right are like blaming X Men ninety seven right now. How dare you describe him? How dare you ruin our childhoods by giving him a proper you know description? Now, and now, so they're turning it into this whole social thing. So the history of Morph is wild. So like Morph died in episode one of season one, like the very first episode. They were like, we need some impactful beat. So they were like, let's just kill this guy. But the fans liked him so much they brought him back, and then he was evil, and then they made him good again. I really like Morph and his personality this season. Uh, as someone, um, center who hears you on the right, I'm just going to tell you to shut up. This makes perfect sense. He can change into literally anything. If there's one fucking person who's going to be this fucking way, it's that one, you fucking idiots. Uh, but X-Men, Wolverine runs towards Master Mold. Gambit gets on his back, charges out those claws, morph, turns into the blob. Wolverine jumps on top of the blob. One shot, Master Mold's head right off. This is what we fucking call peak teamwork. This is what I've been looking for from the Avengers since Endgame. This is, this is all we want is teamwork in in this country right now, where we're so divided. All we need is a team to come together to beat the bad guys. I'm seeing I'm seeing stuff about yeah that they officially label them non-binary. I think it's so. That makes sense. I, I, Look at his face. I mean, it makes it makes sense for the character. I think it's just the label and how it's seen today. <laughs> well, see, this yeah. wouldn't be an issue if there wasn't a thousand. Uh, this is my hypothesis. It wouldn't be an issue if there wasn't a thousand issues before this. If this was the first instance, we'd all look past it. Do yeah, you guys remember? How, do you guys remember how innocent that little lesbian really kiss was at the end what, of Rise of Skywalker? Related to non-binary. Yep. Right, you remember how yeah. innocent that kiss was at the end, of, uh, the end of Rise of Skywalker, right? Twenty nineteen. You remember that peaceful time where they just edited that out for China, and we we're like, "Oh, you shouldn't do that," but we understand it because China is a big market. <laughs> so like, shit's changed yep. so much in four or great, five years. Great episode of South Park, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, next question, follow up question. Let's do it. What character from either the comics or from the previous? seasons do you want to see in this season major apocalypse uh i gotta see a return apocalypse yeah all right robbie haven't really watched it uh, yeah <laughs> so for me what do you, uh, let me ask I, you matt I, what do I you really want to see who do you want to see i want to see forge and x factor okay because cable you know forms x factor forge right. was one of these characters that was like is he with magneto or is he with the x-men is x factor like uh... so i'm kind of bummed that we haven't seen forge yet but i hope we do he's a member of the cheyenne tribe so yeah he's indigenous let's yep. let's, let's click some let's check some boxes and let's get this going marvel um season yeah. two <laughs> ah, let's call it let's, let's go ahead and clip it call it you know um he's forge is showing up i, I like that a lot uh, before we move on to episode two, I want to talk about the writing in this. Cause you say the writing's bad. I thought the writing it's so bad. I thought the writing was so good. Like, you know how hard it is to replicate 
bad nineties writing. Like, like, like it's yeah, like, 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 like it's an art form. Like it's, it's a parody. It's an art form here. The, ep- I, 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 the I episode, with it. the, ep- let me, let me finish the real fast. Let me finish my argument and then you can tear it to shreds. Uh, the episode is called to me, my X-Men. And you think it's about Cyclops becoming, c- coming, into his own as a leader of the X-Men, right? I mentioned the scene earlier. He falls down. He says, to me, my X-Men. I, I got forced goosebumps all over me. But at the end of the episode, we find out Magneto has been left in charge of the X-Men thanks to the last will and testament of Charles Xavier, his BFF forever. That's right, his best friend forever, forever. That's how close they were. Right, but he says at the end, the end of the episode ends with blah 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 blah. blah. The X Men, uh, uh, this all belongs to me, my X Men. Right, so like, the last four words f- from the episode from Magneto when he, you know, the big cliffhanger or the big twist is to me, my X Men, and that is also the title. I think that's very good writing. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but I want to give Bo DeMeo the benefit of the doubt because I'm not familiar with his other shit. So I think the issue I'm having so far with the series is that if we talk about writing storyline wise and where it's going, it's good. But at times, and I get that it's supposed to be cheesy nineties dialogue. The dialogue is utterly atrocious. And so, except for that one instance, and I will give it to you how it ends on that, which I was like, oh shit, that's awesome. Yeah, there were times where you're just like listening to them talk, like when they're playing basketball together right before he comes in and it's like trying to be so 90s. It's it's hard to watch. I hear you, Matt. Wolverine didn't say bub, so you're giving this a one out of 10. And I agree. Yep, yep, bub, right? No bubs yet. No bubs. No bubs. There. Dude, if they save Bub for like the mid credit scene of the season finale, I'm going to be so mad. So, so to give you a, like a kind of contrast, oh, look at the episode of Invincible where the Invincible credit comes up this time. Where Rex <laughs> is like, yeah, that's because I'm a, and it cuts to Invincible. Oh, oh right, right, right. I don't think, dialogue, I don't think we talked about, about that. Yeah. that no, scene. we didn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because how about that scene when he just like, well, I'm doing great. What are you talking about? Or something like that. Just blood just blurting out of his fucking he's, head. He's, he's got a bullet up. through his head uh, and, and hand missing. And, <laughs> geez. Yeah. So you My have that. personality to just you know, stick with that I, no matter what. <laughs> and I, I guess that's the problem I'm having too is I'm watching Invincible as I'm watching X-Men. So I see this great dialogue and then I see this <laughs> X-Men dialogue. And I don't know if it's just because I have this kind of hatred towards Disney right now because they're ruining my childhood. Um, Let the hate whereas go through. Whereas Amazon's trying to get me to bet on sports. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's there's great examples you know, of good writing and good dialogue, Invincible, and there's styles of great writing that's hindered by its, uh, its dialogue. Well, why not watch the next oh, yeah. episode, Matt? Are we... Uh... Are we uh, talking about Halo this episode? I was just wondering now that I'm uh, we're an hour through and a half, how much. So, yeah, we'll yeah. probably no, we'll probably cut this off uh, at the end of this, and then we'll yeah, grab I, the season finale with uh, Forrest next week. Yeah, because I haven't seen this either, so I'm. I'm I refuse be hopping to watch the oh, if you if you guys wait. want to talk about this. Let's uh, yeah, well let's let's just stop there. Do you want to stop at episode one yep. before we get into episode yep. two, and then we'll That's all right. Cool we'll, with me, we'll do. Guys, make sure to subscribe. We'll do a mini episode later on here in the week, uh, and then we'll do the editing processing. So, boom, we'll come out for the next episode. Uh, we'll get episode we'll Halo two and episode. of X Men and uh, the season finale of Halo season two, episode Which eight. It, it finished off well. Please, motherfuckers, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, watch it. Right, just before you go to bed, put on halo season one and just hit play through the whole night before we go to work put on season two guys we need a season three we need to get these watch numbers up it needs to get renewed paramount plus it's free with walmart plus get it over to oh, do it yeah. do it, please. it is uh, um uh, 